guys, welcome to today's, well sorry, welcome to Gia's 3D print. And um, Castle has been in the shop getting a lot of work done. And so let's let's talk Castel upgrades today. And um, I'm printing the um, Pretty Dragon in PLA pink. And I have to say, after using the Ender 3 exclusively for over a week, getting back to the castle is nice even though it's louder. Um, the main thing that's happened is the, um, the motherboard is no longer under the heated bed. It's now sitting nicely on the side. Let me pull back more so you can see how this works. And I'll have a link to all of these designs for you. That's my design that you can see it says uh, Gia G. And um, that's height adjustable. It's connecting to the lower 2020 extrusion. I may do an update so it connects to both extrusion rails, but it's hard to get that accurate and it's more work, but I'll probably get around to doing a mod on it. Um, the AC cables are coming out from the bottom, they're passing through now the, um, eight, the power supply is on the back rail, the Z rail, which is nice. And then um, I might move those to the side or pass them through the holes in the back of the case. It's got a hole on the front for the fan that's not installed yet. And that goes in the available fan one slot connector. I'll get to that. And then um, other upgrades, I'll just run through all of them real quick. Racquetball feet, that's my design. Uh, that's my modify of, of someone else's, but it's in my design. Uh, the, the caps for the base, the caps for the top, those really help with stability. Now the top caps, you're going to want to get the model that has the screws on it because I found I had to glue it, it just it didn't fit. And so that was a problem. Um, other upgrades, the knob is a really good upgrade to make. It just feels so much better, and that little indent gives you a lot of control. Other upgrades. So, we have our beautiful Noctua fan on the nozzle cooler. And then on the back side, there's going to be a 5015 with this cute little adapter. I tried two other adapters. This is the one to use. I'll try to post the link. That's not my design. Uh, other upgrades. We've got the little uh, old-fashioned key on the nozzle. I'm going to put a damp damper on the back of that because that's one of the loudest motors. And uh, and then also I looked at putting the dampers on the um, steppers, but the way it's designed, the screws are on the inside, and it would be hours and hours of frustrating work to try to do that, and it might not even fit. So everyone says the 2208 uh, is the better way to go. What's nice now is that now with the case I have a place to put a fan for the 2208 and I probably don't need to deal with tunnels or any other crazy heating because also you may not even need any um, heat issues because those big holes let the air flow and the heat rise off the board easily and um, it's not near the heated base at all so there's, there's just a lot less heat to manage. And then every single wire has been, just about every one now, has been clipped and put into a plug. The, for the Noctua, what I did is it comes with all these little extenders and I just chained them all together. Now it still ended up slightly short. It's shorter than my regular cables, so that's why I have an extra cable section there. That's actually how long I wish it would be. But as a cheat, I just used all their existing extenders. It's a little heavy on the wires, but um, it worked. And that Noctua is 100% silent, which is awesome. The uh, 5015 uh, is not going to be, or I don't know if this is a 5015, I think it is, um, is going to be a little noisy, noisier, but uh, be much more efficient on the cooling, which right now is kind of crappy. So um, those are all the upgrades so far. Um, one thing I am looking at upgrading are those tensioners from the springs, which are so hard to put on. 
Although I already have them on and they're light. So what I would recommend anyone doing it from the start though is to get the um, the screw tensioners instead of those. It's going to be a lot easier to put a lot more tension in your cables. And I have a slight error on my cable. See it rotate? You can zoom in. It does a little wiggle every now and then. I would like that wiggle to go away so that belt needs to get a little tighter. So. I have to work on that, and I don't think I'll be able to do that without the um, printed tensioner. Uh, you can also buy them in aluminum, which is probably the best thing to do, because I think anytime you put screws and plastic, it's a little wonky, but uh, the plastic would be lighter. Alright, my dragon. I'll come back when it's done. Picasso is just a lot more fun to watch work and uh, do its thing. And, oh, other upgrades, I almost forgot. It's got a v, E3D V6 clone nozzle. It's got a spacer just under the Bowden tube, the square block spacer, because it's not as high. And it has a Micro Swiss uh, 0 0.5 stainless nozzle. And there's a lot of reasons to go to a 0 0.5 instead of a 0 0.4 if you aren't doing a lot of tiny figurine work. Mainly the difference is it will help with bed leveling because you can make your initial layer uh, 0 0.32 and you can actually make all your layers 0 0.32 but if you make your layer 0 0.32 it means that your bed only has to be leveled to about um, 0 0.15 millimeter and that's a little more leeway. Actually if you went to 0 0.6 where I think you do start losing some uh, accuracy and stuff on the details. It's even better because then your bed can be leveled to like 0 0.3 millimeters, which is really not level at all, and it will still print well and give you a good initial layer. So the slightly bigger nozzles help a lot with um, bed leveling being slightly off. Oh, and the last upgrade is the Ultra Base, which everyone yells at me for having uh, glue stick on. I I tend not to refresh the glue stick unless I'm doing something I'm really worried about, like a big ABS print. And the thing is, it doesn't look pretty, but it adds a lot of roughness to the bed. And so I find that those initial streams stick real good with it, and they stick like crap without it. Not crap, but it's different. This is a lot better. So do you need to put glue stick on your ultra base? Probably not, but if you're like me and you're starting to have sticking issues and the height adjustment is being picky, and it does help. And I mean, it's, there's no negative to it other than it looks uglier, so why not, why not? Alright, we'll come back and see this guy when he's done. So over on the Ender 3, these are uh, really useful if you live in Texas or Arizona and you like to garden. These are watering spikes that fit on a water bottle. I use a 1.5 liter. It seems to be about the biggest thing it holds. And what they do is they put the water directly deep into the ground. This version is uh, has two tiny holes on the end of the tip, which isn't printed yet. Um, printing in ABS, I like they have good threads, as you can see, and, uh, yeah, this is a very useful print. Uh, you know, a lot of times people just print figures, but this is, um, this is actually really useful. I like this print. I've printed a lot of them. The first ones I printed were the four-hole version. Dick, he calls it the two-hole, but it's four holes. Um, and then, uh, but the water comes out too quickly, so I'm really hoping we get some kind of slow watering with these. There's also a, just a, a little straw-like spike that connects to a, a tubing that you can find on Thingiverse print. So gardening is uh, really useful. Uh, there's also seed starters. 
and one thing I really want to try to do is make a uh, solar auto watering um, container that's bigger so you can actually grow vegetables in it with a little tiny solar panel so that'll be on the projects list. Boy, the Ender 3 is so quiet now. I never even know it's running. You can barely hear the fans. They have a good, pretty good fan set up. I hate the uh, metal box, but they have a pretty good fan set up. It's not too loud. And then all this ruckus you're hearing is uh, the pre-smoother pre Delta going at it. I've got my retraction cranked up pretty aggressive. Uh, six millimeters uh, and then 60. So you see when it retracts. It's pretty fast. I did that because I was I was getting stringy. Because these uh, deltas actually have pretty long Bowden tubes. You can see how long that it needs to be that long because otherwise it can catch on that little arm there and break your arm, snap it in half. You can see the Bowden tube on this is just a lot shorter. It doesn't have as much to do. Also, I wanted to talk about the Alpha Wise U20 a little bit. Um, it's nice because they've done a, it is still a single rail, but it's a uh, 2040 rail with six wheels in the CR10 style. So they, they actually can get a stable bed with that. Uh, I do prefer the two parallel rails, which is much better, but um, it's still good. And it's all metal parts. They've made everything metal on it. So you're gonna get some good stability. The downsides of the U20 is they put that stupid touch screen on the top of the control unit and it's a huge honking controller box. So I think all these 3D printers need to come with uh, or have optional leg kits because raising them up is one of the most important things you can do to help with bed leveling. And they really need to not put LCD panels in stupid places like on the Ender 2 and the U20 on the top. You can't see it, you can't use it. It makes it hard to deal with. Angled is the way to go. So these look just like bottle caps at this point, but oh, they will be so much more. I guess I, I turned on supports as my default. So we're getting a center spike that it hasn't done before. It takes a long time to print this because of the threading. It's very, it, there's just no speed up, and it's very um, little mo motions and movements everywhere. But you can see how exaggerated the thread is, and um, I would like to make a version that's even a little uh, stretched out and thicker because they are a little flimsy. It really needs to be a little solid. What I might do is just put a. Um, Put an outer ring around it, um, make it a little thicker. Alright, let's come back when everything's done. I think pretty good. Obviously not quite Ender 3 level, but uh, very, very acceptable. Considering uh, this this STL had pre-built supports which were a little too aggressive. This is a few issues with the supports, but um, nice. It's right off the base, so it's good. And then let's check on the water spouts. They're coming along. I wasted some time on that middle support, which shouldn't be there. Doesn't need it. The damper is nice. It gets very quiet with the dampers. It doesn't need a fan upgrade. Not really. And that's today's 3D. Uh, sorry, the I always do that. Today. This is a GS3D print for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it.